primary election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Now is the time to make a plan. Whether you plan to vote absentee by mail, in person at your county auditor's office before election day, or at your polling place on June 4th, it's important you take steps now to make your plan at voterready.iowa.gov. Remember, election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Find more info at voterready.iowa.gov. This message is presented by the Iowa Secretary of State. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. May is all about the mamas. I felt like moms were superheroes before I had kids, but baby, now that I am on the other side of motherhood and have seen it for myself, I am here to tell you that mothers deserve so much more than a day. So the least that we could do here at Girl Stop Playing was celebrate moms all month long. Now, ever since my very first podcast, um, Confessions of a Workaholic, I have literally had the opportunity to interview and connect and share the stories of hundreds of amazing, phenomenal women, many of who are also moms. And to be able to balance, and I don't mean balance as in giving equal attention to, but literally like a balancing act mentally, physically, emotionally to balance life, motherhood, marriage, and then try to have your mental health together. Like it's a lot. So I want to spend this month celebrating the women who are doing it all. So I'll be dropping some bonus episodes throughout this month, some of my favorite episodes of some phenomenal women who you can certainly learn from. Let's go ahead and tap into a spotlight episode on a bad mama jamma. Girl, stop playing. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. Because you already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And I have one of my favorite working women in the building <laughs> for tonight's show. But before I introduce you to my girl, I got to make sure that you know that this week's episode is brought to you by Pull Your Card, my brand new party game that's adding a little razzle dazzle to your next girls night, game night, family night, family reunion, vacation, vacation, however you get down. Grab your deck at PullYoCard.com. So today I am introducing you to the number one best-selling author, host of Redefining Wealth podcast, speaker, coach, all of the things, mommy, mogul, Patrice Washington is in the building. Hey. Hey, Patrice. Hey, cool. I'm so happy to see y'all. That's not fake. I really <laughs> am happy to see her because what y'all don't know. Is Patrice was the very first person who ever let me interview her for my podcast. March 2015, yes. run the receipts. Okay? Yes. Your girl is a podcast OG. I know y'all ain't know that, but put a little respect on my name. Been doing this for 20, <laughs> since 2015. And you were the first person who trusted me to talk to me yeah. way back when I had literally zero listeners. Can we go back, though, before go that? Back. Yes, we because can. Because I remember us being introduced and meeting at a Starbucks. At a Starbucks, yep. And like spending, I don't know yep. how long talking, mm -hmm. but to see everything that you've done since then, I want to say that was like 2014. That was a long time ago. 2013, yes. 2014. Yes. And just to see the evolution for us both. It is so encouraging. And it it's a is. testament to like having girlfriends. Yes. You know? And yes. I, I love to see it. I am just so excited to hear all of the newness. Like y'all are going to find Ooh. out while I'm finding out because I have not been able to catch up with Patrice because she's so busy Ooh. doing the damn thing. <laughs> 
You said, oh, is it bad newness? Oh, it's not bad, no. Okay. It's it, a lot of good stuff, right? It is a lot of good stuff, but there's been a lot of change. We gonna talk about the change. We gonna get in your business a little bit? You can get a little Just bit. Just a little you bit. You can get in my business. And then offline, I can really get into it? Well, you know what? I divulge so much on my podcast anyway. Okay, well, that, divulge some on my podcast. I will. Okay, Let's please do. It. So that's literally my first question, is the evolution of the money maven. Because before I get into that, I also would like to say, this is how... We go back. Not only were you the first guest on my podcast, you were a Claire Huxtable honoree with the Single Wives Club. Okay, shout out to the single wives out yeah. there. You were a cover girl for Work, Work Mag. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for, even when you probably don't even know what the hell I'm inviting you to, you just be like, you know what? My girl invited me. I'm going to come. And I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I seriously no, appreciate seriously, that. I do. I really appreciate that. That is literally that. my response. Like, if they say, well, Coriel invited you, I'm like, okay, I Whatever don't even really is. research look it up I don't know what it is I'm like okay I'll be there and that is so valuable especially in this space where you know people might look at my little you know my my YouTube views we just not getting started on YouTube okay they ain't putting no respect on my name yet (laughs) but people look at those things to see how valuable you are to see whether it's worth you know knowing you or you know they do all of the things and to have someone who's truly been down for all of these years I just appreciate you so thank you for being here. Can I here. tell you what I see value in? Yes. I see value in people saying what their vision is and then actually walking it out and doing it, especially in a time when we are just full of so many talkers. People mm. talk and talk and talk, and yet you never see them do. Do the thing. And I think about sitting down at Starbucks eight, nine years ago and us both talking about things that we wanted to do. I didn't see a podcast in my future. I don't think at that time I was on the Steve Harvey show Mm -hmm, yet. mm -hmm, Not yet, yeah. You know, like all the things that happened from there, but we were just women who were like about business, on a mission, and we had hearts to serve. Yep. And we wanted to see women be better. And in our own ways, we've gone on to do that. And I also met people around that time who haven't done anything. So I say yes every time because you want to honor the fact that someone is actually doing what they say they're going to do. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's 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 good to have good. She gonna call me one day to come. (laughs) Wink, wink. And I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. No questions asked. But way back then, um, like you said, I don't even know if you were doing Steve Harvey yet, but you've Mm -hmm. done Steve Harvey radio, TV, best selling author, number one best selling author. Let me put some respect on your name. You're a sought after speaker. I've seen you speak on some of the largest stages, the largest platforms. Platforms. What is the evolution? What are you doing now? What am I doing now? Um, so from the time you met me back then, people just called me America's Money Maven. The Money Maven, yeah. And then I went on to become the Money Maven of the Steve Harvey Show. And I just to go back, for those of you who don't know the backstory, I got into all of this personal finance education way back at 19 years old. I started out in real estate, became a real estate and mortgage broker during senior year in college, went on to create a seven-figure business by 25, and I thought that that would go on forever Mm -hmm. until that recession hit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In 2007, um, I was on hospital bed rest. I took a fall down the stairs at 20 weeks pregnant that sent me into preterm labor. Mm. And I spent 10 weeks in the hospital, and by the time I came out, yes, I had a healthy baby, but I did have a healthy amount of medical debt. I had racked up almost $400,000 in medical debt. That should be illegal it should be because my insurance dropped me and I didn't even know because I'm in the hospital not looking at mail um and I had 16 loan officers and real estate agents who worked in my brokerage who could not close a deal because the banks we worked with were closing down left and right Mm. and so I went into the hospital with a seven-figure business and by 2009 I was literally scraping up change and applying for welfare right so when people you know, hear my bio or see me on things, I always want to make sure that they are very clear about where right? you come from. That I'm not here just because of textbook. I do have a master's now in behavioral finance and financial psychology. I'm certified in financial psychology. I have all the textbook, but I do what I do because of my testimony. Mm-hmm. And so when we talk about the evolution, I originally had my come to Jesus moment um, after my home foreclosed and I was in this teeny tiny apartment. I had moved from Southern California when my home foreclosed to Metairie, Louisiana. And that's why I had my (laughs) sick and tired of being sick and tired, come to Jesus moment. Um, And I heard what I refer to as like a still small voice, but you know that nudge or that little feeling in your gut that says do something. 
that feeling for me was like, get your Bible. Mm. So I ended up on this scripture. It's Proverbs 17, 16. And I always tell people, even if you're not religious, that's not the point. Take it as a good quote. Proverbs 17, 16 said, what good is money in the hands of a fool if they have no desire to seek wisdom? That's why my Instagram now is still wisdom. seek wisdom, PCW. It was what good is money in the hands of a fool if they had no desire to seek wisdom? When I had that revelation call, like like game changer. First of all, I was like, mm, wisdom. I feel like I'm smart though. You ever be like, but I went to school. <laughs> I graduated with honors mm-hmm. from the University of Southern California. I'm smart. No, ma'am. <laughs> um, but you don't have wisdom. <laughs> wisdom is knowing how to apply the information you take in, right? So all all of these things were happening. I have this epiphany and I feel like even in the midst of me being in one of the worst financial times of my life, I'm still supposed to help people with personal finance. Mm -hmm. I still felt compelled, like the audacity, right? To think that you could be in the midst of the storm and still help serve other people. But that's what I felt. Mm -hmm. So when I started to do that, it was starting a blog. Blog turns into writing for magazines. Magazines turn into radio. Radio turn into books. And, you know, all these things happen. But in 2016, I'm on the Dr. Oz show. And, you know, Dr. Oz, he love a good visual, right? He's like, we're going to, I go in for my rehearsal. He's like, we're going to talk about saving on groceries. And so we're moving these felt pieces of broccoli and tomatoes from one board to the next. And we're having these conversations. And I literally am like, this is a cool opportunity, but this is not what I was called to do. Mm. You still did it though, right? You ain't tell Dr. Oz I, I did, come. girl. Oh, okay. You know, I finished okay. it out. Yeah, right. I did. Right. I finished it out, but it really starts something up in me because I realized that my whole career up until that point, I hadn't been sharing with people what I was really doing behind the scenes. I was doing what people put finance people in a box. Like, mm-hmm, oh, we mm-hmm. talk about budgets and savings and credit reports. But there was so much more that I was actually doing that was helping me rebuild wealth. Mm-hmm. And this time better i believe in stronger and so in 2017 i launched the redefining wealth podcast and um now there's redefine wealth for yourself my last book and all of those things and now that i am newly divorced i was kind of (laughs) wondering i'm not gonna lie i wasn't gonna ask though i I was not gonna ask but you could of course you could ask now that i'm newly divorced wendy williams i'm not gonna put nobody on the spot make you mad at me but But see, you know, I mean, people who are purpose chasers, that's what I call my community, who listen to the podcast, I have used my divorce to still be a lesson. And I'm I'm really open about the takeaways Mm -hmm. and the growth, because to me, nothing happens to you. It happens for For you. you. And I believe that we just have to embrace when a season is complete. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be ugly. I determined from the beginning I'm going to divorce with dignity. Mm. And so the pillars that I teach from at Redefining Wealth, that is what has literally helped me get through this season with ease and grace. Mm -hmm. Not that it's easy, but I think that your attitude towards a process will determine how you make progress, right? And my attitude was, I will do this with dignity. Yes. And, And we have. Yeah. So this is a new season for me. I call this season Scaling Joy. That's going to be my next book. Guys, Mm -hmm. this was not on my list of topics Oh, you had all kind of questions. Yeah, that's the question. We're going to have to take a little detour. Okay, so I do... First of all, just appreciate your honesty, yeah. your transparency. Because like I said, I was not gonna, I wasn't gonna ask you, but I do remember when I, you know, when you got the Claire Huxtable Award, mm-hmm. you were very honest, you were very transparent, you told us your business, and you did it from a place of learn teaching from your lessons learned. Always, and I think that that is one of the best things that you can do is being vulnerable, it's sharing, it's literally not just learning the lessons and being selfish, but sharing them with other people so mm-hmm. that I. I can learn, you know, from the things that you've gone through. So being newly divorced, mm-hmm. this show, like I mentioned, is all about helping women make the money and get the honey. So yeah. many women out there are single. They're in their single season. They're in their searching season, whether they're searching for themselves, searching for a mate, searching for completion, whatever. What would you say is like your biggest lesson that you're taking from your divorce? Because this isn't the end of the road, right? This is just Mm-mm. a new, you on a new path. So what? <laughs> look at her face. Mm-mm. Should I ask the next question? <laughs> No, oh, this is not the end of the You came in here with the shoulder out. I'm like, what is, what's the next path you're going down? But what would no. you say you're like walking away knowing now that you didn't necessarily know before that can help somebody else? That the most important thing is loving yourself fully and completely. Mm. Um, 
I got married when I was 26. I started uh, dating my husband about 21, 22. And, you know, some of the stories that I tell are just knowing that back then, I didn't grow up feeling beautiful, right? I was not I was not known as the pretty one. I was the smart one. Um, I couldn't look in the mirror without cringing until I was 25 years old because I always wished I looked like someone else. Mm. I'm the kid that used to scrub her skin in the tub wishing I was lighter because I had other people in my family who were lighter and people always called me the darkie, the blackie, the this, the that. That's right? so crazy to me. Yeah, but it happens. And I know people are in the audience like, girl, that's me. That's what they do, right? And so... I didn't have the best um, perception of self. Mm -hmm. I knew I was smart and I just leaned into achievement, but I, I was grateful, right? And that's not to take away from him, but it's also to acknowledge that at 22, 23 years old, I was like, oh, wow, someone loves me. Mm -hmm. And we were best friends. And so that evolved. But almost 20 years later, I'm a different woman. I have done you know years. You know you now, baby. Uh, personal Hello. development. Yes. Well, you know, but it's it's not even the achievements anymore. It's the, it's the personal development. Mm -hmm. It's the therapy. It's the healing childhood trauma. It's the learning to forgive people who will never say I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's the being able to look at myself and be like, God made no mistakes in creating me. Like, I'm exactly who I'm supposed to be. It's looking at what I do every day and seeing that, like your life has purpose. You were born with purpose, on purpose, for purpose. Like you are called to impact other people. And then when I see my clients and I see what like I can create, even in all my flaws and imperfections, there is great things to be done. You start to love yourself on a different level. Like, you know what? I actually am really awesome, but also I'm allowed to evolve mm -hmm. and to think that you should entertain and tolerate and be okay with things that you were okay with 18 years ago is crazy that's wild mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and I just got to this point especially when I turned 40 um, in 2021 my life coach had me do an exercise she said do the waiting the, the willing to lose list mm. I'm like what is the willing to lose she said it's not that you're will you want to lose it but you're willing to lose people places things like you know whatever in order to be all that you believe God has called you to be and I had to be radically honest see a lot of times you we put don't your husband get on honest. that list I didn't at first because I didn't want to see it so I didn't but when she first explained the exercise, you knew it. It kind of dropped in my spirit, but mm -hmm. I didn't want, of course, nobody gets married wanting to get divorced. Nobody gets married thinking that I was envisioning picking up grandkids with this man mm -hmm. one day, you know, like doing all the things. We go into the tape, we die in like notebook, like together mm -hmm. holding hands. I had never envisioned it. But I had to be radically honest and ask myself a lot of questions about, are you really fulfilled? And do you actually feel like you're being loved the way that you now love yourself? And the answer was no. And he had learned to love me in brokenness, but mm. didn't understand who I was as a more whole and complete woman. The type of love you gave me 10 years ago is not gonna sustain who I am today. And I had to be honest about that. And I was honest and if someone doesn't have the capacity to love you how you want to be loved, I think for me, I had to choose to love myself more than anyone and anything. And in loving myself to that extent, I couldn't settle for love that didn't serve me. How? What was the conversation with your daughter like? Because Minnie Maven is not many no, she's anymore. Now. Jesus. Yes, yeah. she is a whole little grown mm -hmm. becoming a little grown woman. Mm -hmm. And I, you can't just make a decision like that, make a life change like that the same way you could if she was five. Correct. You know, so what were the conversations like? Because I think that's so important. Again, mm -hmm. allowing her to learn through your lessons, but then also letting her keep that safe space with her yeah, daddy. So what were those conversations like? It's so funny because he and I just talked about this on this past Sunday. We We were talking about how blessed we are to have a daughter that can hold space for both of us. No matter what, she can love her mom and she can love her dad and respect us both. We don't talk ill of each other. Mm -hmm. Definitely not around her, but we're honest. Definitely not around her. Definitely not around her, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we're honest about what we each need. Mm -hmm. And she gets to respect that it's okay 
Like it's okay for people to know what they need and accept that they're not getting it from their partner. Like has nothing to do with her and our love for her. But I remember her telling me early on when we first separated, um, she's like, I think you and dad are going to be great co-parents. And I was like, you think so? And she was like, yeah, like you guys are going to be great co-parents. Like she, like the whole time, I think because we approached it from, we're going to do this with dignity. She's just seen it as a process and Mm -hmm. not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, okay, this is what's happening. It's not to say she hasn't had her moments, right? And she has a small group at church that has supported her a lot and all those things. But she's been very accepting and very like, she told me one day, mom, like, I love seeing you so happy. She and can like, see so it. so in love. And I did not think I was unhappy. Mm-hmm. If you would have asked me a few years ago, I would have never said, oh, I'm unhappy in my marriage. That wasn't it. But when I started to think about what where my life could go and what it could be if I was loved the way I wanted to be loved I had to be honest Mm -hmm. and so it wasn't that it was terrible he was awful guy and we were just fighting it we weren't doing any of those things it was but there was an awakening for me and I had to be honest about. was he shocked since it wasn't you know like y'all were always it was always a problem or did he, he kind of see it coming? He would say that he was shocked, but I don't think he really was. I don't think anyone wants to say I knew it was coming. Um, we had had conversations, and I'm very open, you know, and I'm very clear. I'm a clear communicator, right? So it's not that I hadn't voiced certain things. I literally just don't believe he had the capacity. It, that's different than desire. Mm-hmm. I believe that he had the desire and not necessarily the capacity in, in, in the time frame that I was working with. Mm-hmm. And I had to just say, I, I, there's no prize in saying, oh, I was married for 40 years, but 25 of them I was unhappy. For Facts. what? Facts. And that's what many of our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers did. We don't live in that time anymore, mm-hmm. right? So I have a right to be happy, and I want to be happy and like fully express all of who I am all of the time. And... So we had conversations. He still has said that he felt blindsided. Um, And of course, that's to be expected, right? And a part of like a big lesson that I've learned is I owe him the dignity of his own process. When we first separated, because I wanted it to be so, you know, amicable, I was like, we're going to talk every week. And we're going to flush out everything. We're not going to waste all our money on all these attorneys. People were like, it's going to take you three years with all the stuff you got. I was like, I do not receive that. (laughs) We're going to do this with grace. We're going to do this amicably. And he went along with it. But I realized after several months that in his mind, he still thought there was a chance he was being nice because he's like, oh, if I do what she says, we're going to get back together. And in my head, I was like really clear that that was not an option. And... Um, you know, we had some some difficult conversations and I had to just apologize just recently. I'm like, I was not trying to intentionally control anything, but I realized by by, you know, carrying on that way and just like, hey, we're going to talk every week. And we're going to do this and it's going to look like that, that I was being controlling, not from a like fear based place. But it was it was control nonetheless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and It wasn't fair because he needed to grieve and a part of his grief may have included not seeing or talking a, a to true me. like cut. a true yeah. like right and so that that was a big lesson like give people the dignity of their process like you can still do something with dignity and allow it to be difficult mm. having dignity doesn't mean it's just gonna be perfect mm-hmm. yeah so you dating can i ask you that yeah with I intention. Knew I knew she was dating. I knew it. Because she was like, yes, <laughs> yes, not the end of the road, baby. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that it was I talked about it on the podcast um, that I was going to date with intention. So earlier this year, I'm on a flight. Um, I had a brand gig in New York and I was flying to speak at San Antonio. And I'm on the flight and I literally have this, like, again, that, like, s- still small voice that's, that's like nudging. It's like, you're not even clear on what you want. Mm-hmm. Do you even really know what you want? And, you know, you can list a few things like honest, kind, right? And so I take my phone out, open up the notes, and my spirit is like, write everything that you want and don't hold back. And I get down to like seven things and I'm like, 
I remember reading an article where they were like, women are too picky and they just need to have three things and let God fill in the rest. And then my spirit was like, they were not talking to you, ma'am. Your spirit said, write it all. The list was like 29 things. Mm. 29 things. And every day, like not every day, but I would say a couple times a week, I just kind of review it because I started to have an awareness. This is the thing. I was heads down faithful, like all the thing for 14 and a half years. Right. So I didn't even know when men were flirting with me because I used to just always be like, mm -hmm, Oh, thank you. They were like, Oh, you're beautiful. Mm, thank you so much. <laughs> I never really looked around, paid attention, none of that. So having the list allowed me to start having more awareness around men. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I could meet people and all of a sudden, like I would notice like, Oh, someone's flirting with me and I would talk to them and then I go, Oh, mm -mm. that ain't it. No, you know, not you. Like, I remember <laughs> one thing on the list call was like, oh, um, I want someone that's humorous. Right. And I met a guy. He seemed really cool. I'm talking to him. And then I realized he has mean spirited humor. Mm. So his humor is at the expense of other, other pe people. I don't really like that. As someone who was bullied, you know, as a kid and all that, when it was teasing, mm -hmm, but it was nasty. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. like, I really don't like mean spirited humor. Um, so I had to like update the list. I was like, humor, let me get not specific. Yeah, let me right. get specific. So that was a really good exercise for me um, in this season. Just like, okay, what do you, what do you want? I will say this: I learned that there's not a shortage of men. <sighs> Tell them. Look in that camera right there and say that one more time. I have really learned that there's not a shortage of men and good men. And I all like I said before, I think it's your attitude and mm -hmm. what you expect. Mm -hmm. Because if your perception is all men are dogs and everyone's evil, then that's the lens that you're gonna like look at everyone. And that's what you're going to attract. And that's what you attract. But I've actually met a lot of great men. They were not necessarily great for me, but it was really a great exercise. I'm like, oh, nice people exist out here. Yes. Nice tall ones. Come on, nice tall ones. Do you notice know men be lying about their height? Yes. Why do they do that like you're not going to see them in real life and know they're not? And I'm too tall to play. I'm too tall to play that game. <laughs> Stop. Listen, guys. Stop lying about your height. But I do agree with what you said because even before I met my husband, and we are here in Atlanta where they say it ain't no good straight black <laughs> man, okay? I met several good men. They just weren't for me yeah so i don't and but i never ever ever subscribe to there's no good men the men are just cheating you know i've never subscribed mm -hmm. to that but i feel like women who put that out there that's what you're gonna get back yeah all the time all the time i mean your mind is always looking for ways to confirm its beliefs mm. it's always searching for a way to confirm so if you're looking for a certain type of thing and you're like all people do this thing that's, that's all you you're get. ever going to see mm -hmm. and i again i just I don't. You ain't subscribing to that. I'm not subscribing That's to that. That's not for you. Well, yeah. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Keep that shoulder out, sis. <laughs> He's coming. He is <laughs> coming. Okay, so you got to tell me about Command the Stage. Yeah. You mentioned I was in New York doing my thing. I had something going on in San Antonio. Yeah. You're always all around speaking, which is a desire, a goal for so many people. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Command the Stage because you're helping other people do what you do. One thing about mama, she is going to make sure that everyone else is taken care of before she even thinks about treating herself. So if you are looking for the perfect gift to make mom feel special this Mother's Day, make sure you check out the Mega Moisture Duo from Osea Malibu because body care is self-care. Since 1996, Osea has been making clean, clinically proven, seaweed-infused skincare. So this Mother's Day, treat mom to the everyday spa experience she deserves. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code GSPP at OseaMalibu.com. Plus, you'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to OseaMalibu.com and use code GSPP for 10% off. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the big... One thing about mama, she is going to make sure that everyone else is taken care of before she even 
thinks about treating herself. So if you are looking for the perfect gift to make mom feel special this Mother's Day, make sure you check out the Mega Moisture Duo from Osea Malibu because body care is self-care. Since 1996, Osea has been making clean, clinically proven, seaweed-infused skincare. So this Mother's Day, treat mom to the everyday spa experience she deserves. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code GSPP at OseaMalibu.com. Plus, you'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to OseaMalibu.com and use code GSPP for 10% off. Primary election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Now is the time to make a plan. Whether you plan to vote absentee by mail, in person at your county auditor's office before Election Day, or at your polling place on June 4th, it's important you take steps now to make your plan at voterready.iowa.gov. Remember, Election Day is Tuesday, June 4th. Find more info at voterready.iowa.gov. This message is presented by the Iowa Secretary of State. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. It's moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah, so Command the Stage is. It's a transformational speaking course. I don't believe in being just a trainer or a motivational speaker. Let me break that down, right? So you have to understand the purpose behind why you're opening your mouth. I only open my mouth with the intention of transformation. Inspiration is cute, right? But if I rah, rah, rah you to death and get you pumped up and I don't equip your hands and help you move your feet, you're going to be exactly the same. You're going to go to sleep and be like, well, that was nice yesterday. Mm -hmm, And that's mm -hmm. it. Trainers are there to just inform. Right. They're like, here are the bullet points on the slides. I'm going to read to you what you can already read on the PowerPoint. That's what a majority of people are. What I train on or what I teach is from like a spirit of transformation. So, yes, I want to inspire and yes, I want to inform, but I also want to help you do something different with your life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if I have three minutes to talk to you at a networking event or 30 minutes for a keynote or 60 minutes for a presentation or an interview. The way we articulate who we are in the world, it matters. And the conviction and clarity in which we do it, like that matters. Mm -hmm. And that's what I teach, you know, mostly women. I've had a few good men come through, Co. But mostly women, that's what I teach them to do. How do you um, take what may have been one of the most painful moments in your life and share that in a way that really helps other people Mm -hmm. like elevate in their lives. But how do you do that without being the victim? Because a lot of our stories, a lot of why we do what we do Mm -hmm. is a sad story, but you have the ability to tell your story as a victor and not a victim. So for someone who dealt with the childhood meanness, Mm -hmm. Um, you, I'm sure, can relate to the people who say, okay, that sounds good. I would love to do that, but I had, I got some confidence stuff. Like, there's just something that won't allow me to get up there and be vulnerable in such a way that I can, you know, provide transformation. Mm-hmm. What is your advice or a couple tips, if you could share some, for how you can command the stage? Mm-hmm. Aside from them just buy the course, cause get, <laughs> get with it. But what are some things for people who are like, that sounds good. I know that, you know, God is telling me to move yeah. in this direction, but I just can't bring myself to get on stage and be vulnerable. So let me tell you a couple things. The very first thing is most people think that they have to be completely removed from something to teach about it or to talk about it. Facts. So they don't want to share until they're all the way on the other side. But I have found that in vulnerability, your audience will appreciate you sharing the middle. 
we want to share the end. Mm -hmm. So, oh, when I'm all the way out of this thing, then I'll say something. I was in the midst of my divorce like, hey, guys, so here's what's going on, right? Because if you extract the lessons, you don't have to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. The main thing is just saying like, hey, here's where I am. Here's what I'm learning and offering people something to think about. So that idea that you have to be perfect, I always tell my clients, people don't expect perfection, right? God, if you feel like God calls you to do something, is not asking for perfection. Obedience is the only thing required. Will you just will you just do the thing and give the best you can? Because if I die today, Co, and I've never made it to a perfect ten, if I was a seven, my only job is to help one through sixes. Mm. What you worried about eight, nines, and tens for? If you're a two, there's some ones and there's some people at ground zero that need something that you have. They're not sleeping at night. They're tossing and turning. They're wondering if anybody understands what they are going through, and you might have the answer. And you are protecting that and hiding that? Like, girl, we don't have time. Girl, girl stop, stop playing. playing. Girl, stop playing. We don't have time for that, right? So that's one thing. Um, people are not looking for an expert. They're only looking for a guide. Mm. So if you could just get someone to the next best step, that is good enough. Um, and then I will say a lot of people don't tell their stories, Co, because they are scared to talk about the supporting characters. Ooh. It's not that they don't want to tell the story. They're scared of the backlash from the people, from people around who them. were mm -hmm. in the story who will come back and say all the things. And to them, I say, I'm more committed to the vision of what I'm supposed to do and who I'm supposed to impact than I am attached to other people's feelings about that impact. Let me tell y'all, I can't wait to tell this story and talk about some of these supporting characters that had me <laughs> messed up over the years, okay? I'm going to put it in a book, and you know who you are. But the thing is, you can tell the story without really calling people out. I'm calling them out. Okay, is well, it you okay can, to do well, that? Well, you can call them out if is you want okay? to. If you want to. Okay. If, you can, if you can handle what comes back from that. I can handle it. But I've shared so many stories from the stage and on the podcast, and I will never pinpoint and say who the person is. There is a way that you can tell the story and leave yourself and the other people with dignity. Dignity just seems to be my word tonight. It is. I don't I don't have enough of it apparently, but okay, we're going to work on that. But don't let supporting characters stop you from telling your story. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's your story. And just because someone is a supporting character, their background, really what you're trying to communicate to help transform other people are the lessons. You're extracting the lessons and the takeaways and you're packaging that up in a way that, so that people could get practical steps for them to move forward. They really don't care if it was your uncle, your brother, your cut. They don't, they don't really need to fill in all those blanks. And mm -hmm. I think that's what prevents people from just telling the story in the first place is the supporting characters. So let's say you get your story down. Mm -hmm. You've gotten your confidence together. This is a personal question. How you get out of these uh, empowerment brunch speaking engagements that ain't paying you nobody? How you get on some stages to come with some checks? That by, is that an offline question? What? Because what is happening out here? Um, I don't want no exposure. No more. Please book me with a budget. Book you with a budget. Please. Um. So I would say, well, first of all, you know this very well. Create your own. So wait yes, for your, yes, own yes, yes, your own stage. You create your own stage. So that's number one. Um, number two, I think that people are going to treat you how you allow yourself to be Go treated. Go ahead, get me together. Get me together. They're going to treat fine. you, right? So we have a habit. And when you're first starting out, I understand wanting to be everywhere and do everything. But I can say for women like you who already have a platform, it's still really, um, and I went through this, and, and it's still a stretch for me sometimes, it's still really hard to not want to accept something for positioning. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do this because so-and-so was there. But you are ready at a place that you prayed for. So my new thing is like, is, is my mantra, I'm here. I'm here. I don't need to be there because so-and-so is going to be there. I'm here. And so I will either create my own stage or create my own opportunities um, and allow other people to see that that's like, that's what it is. So like, you know, I used to be everywhere for free and then it was like, okay, $500 a talk. And then it was like a thousand dollars a talk. And now my virtual talks are 15,000 for 45 minutes. And I'm not leaving my house for less Hold than on, 20. I'm going to silence. <laughs> Cause guess what? I remember at Starbucks, 
Yeah. It, you, the, the number wasn't 15, it was five. You were like, if, I'm not coming anywhere if I can't make 5K. So let Ooh, me just high yes. five you. I remember. Because oh, then, wow. to me, that was like, this is making 5K just to show up. <laughs> like, that was like, I'm putting that on my vision board. Yeah. So thank you for giving me something new to put up on that vision board. And you know what we have to do as black women, especially? Just talk about numbers. Because mm-hmm. we be getting played out here. Yeah, and it, and it won't stop unless we talk about it. So I remember being invited to this big event, right? Um, woman produced, women's event. I think they were going to have like a thousand people. This was like a year ago or so. And so they reached out like, oh, we'd love to have you, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, my booking agent sends them the rates. And then they're like, oh, we gave the entire speaking budget to a male influencer who I will not name for a woman's event and then asked all the women to, to speak, speak for, for free. free. Baby, I couldn't even, I couldn't say no fast enough, but I didn't just say no. I sent them a Loom video. Girl, I recorded a video. What'd you say With the, the email that they sent up on the screen. And I was like, hey, so-and-so, hey, so-and-so, I really appreciate your vision for what you want to do for women. But in good conscience, I have to say no. And I didn't want to just say no. I want to tell you why. And I was like, for women, and especially for black women coming up behind me, you will never ask us to work for free at a woman's event where you're going to charge tickets, right? And then pay it all to a man. The audacity. But I was just as nice. And I With just a smile. Was, mm-hmm. We're going to use this as a teachable moment. But we have to, like, first of all, we have to start saying no and telling them why. And I've had to say no to a lot of things. You know, my mantra is chase purpose, not money. Mm-hmm. But I've said no to a lot of opportunities, especially in the last few years. So I've been named on all these lists, right? So success magazines, 12 most inspiring black voices and this thing's most this and this thing's most that. So I get approached to do a lot and then they will make me these offers. And I'm like, hi, is this an offer that you would make to a white male with the same credentials? I'll wait. And I asked for Zoom meetings because I need to see everybody's face who was involved with this decision. Hi. When's your birthday, Patrice? March 15th. Hmm. You're not playing games out here. Not at this point because I feel like I have a responsibility. I Like I coach way too many women to just continue to allow these shenanigans to go on and not on my watch, right? So when I have the opportunity, I'm like, let me get you straight because I don't need your yes. I don't need your platform. I don't need it. So I can get you straight so that when you the approach my good sis coming up behind me, you're like, ooh, last time it that black lady, quite, it didn't go so yeah. good. <laughs> so let me do better for her. So yeah, I, I take that role now very seriously. Like, yeah, and I talk about numbers openly because we need to know because when we don't know, we allow people to continue to play a short. And we don't know because it's just better than what we've had. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. But as I like as my career has grown, I've really had to look at saying no to more things so that I could pass it on to someone else. Right? Pass me that little listen. Yeah. Yeah. But I do that all the time when I say no. I'm like, I'm not available or that's not like that's not for, for me. me. Yeah. But I do know so and so and I try to pass it on, especially to a woman of color, mm-hmm. because usually most of the stages I go on, I am the woman of color It's usually my face is like the color mm-hmm, on the mm-hmm. thing. I just be looking at the line of like, oh, here I am again. <laughs> <sighs> just me, right? So, um, but talking about dollars, I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I said that to you openly because it does make us more aware. And I'm thankful for the mentors who have said certain numbers to me. And I'm like, wait, what now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Let me update my little- mm-hmm, My little she- dream board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then my next question is, when you pull up these looms and you be doing these videos, you be getting the people together. How do you sustain? Because you have some very strong relationships, mm-hmm. right? And something that you said on my podcast that you probably don't remember, but a lot of things you say really stick with me. Mm-hmm. You said, and I'm not going to, this is not quotes because I ain't going to get it right. But you said something to the effect of there's always someone watching you with the, power, the to power to bless you. There it is. I still say it every day. And it's very true. Yeah. So how do you navigate speaking up for yourself not accepting less than Mm -hmm. but still maintaining relationships Mm -hmm. with people you know because i'm clear and i'm calm 
and I speak with like clarity and so conviction. I need to slow it down a little it's, bit. Yeah, I'm calm, right? So I don't respond when I'm initially right because the first response is like, "Oh no, they didn't!" <laughs> right? I'm still from <laughs> South Central Los Angeles, so like the first response is like, "Oh, oh," and then I have to remember, right? This is a teachable moment for them. If you don't come correct, you're gonna blow it because they'll stay away from us mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. some time. So I use it as like, like I said, hey, so-and-so, I'm so like honored that you wanted me to participate, but I have to be honest with you, right? And I think it's just in our delivery. Um, even when you gather people, leave them with their dignity. <laughs> like you can gather people and still like, you probably didn't even think about this. Mm -hmm. It probably didn't even occur to you. You, pro you, you probably weren't aware, but I want to bring this to your attention in the event that you want to ask another woman of color with credentials like mine to do this thing for absolutely free, what are you actually saying here? I have someone make me an offer to do something with their platform. They wanted me to host my own podcast. They wanted me to write articles. There was a social component. It was a huge platform, right? And they wanted to pay me $200,000 a year. Now, 10 years ago, awesome. Nine years ago, maybe awesome. Well, I make multiple seven figures running my own thing. You're asking me to leave my business to oh, come be a face like, for yours. Okay, that sounds all right with me, but you can't do your thing. You're going to do that yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, I, I could do you. my thing got and you. do their thing. I would be putting all of my effort into their thing for, for what? Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. you get to tell me what to do? <laughs> Oh, you get like absolutely not. Those numbers are different, and I don't want to hear anyone to hear that and kind of tune out. The bigger point of it is that whenever someone approaches you with something that just does not make sense, we have to start to speak up. It's the way that we speak up. I'm never rude, you know. I don't I don't cuss people out. I don't talk to them crazy, but I'm gonna let you know that that's not that doesn't work for me. But see, can we take this all the way back to starting with my honey conversation? Mm -hmm. This is who I have evolved into. Mm -hmm. And the this more... This Patrice 2.0, baby. The more, this 4.0, because I'm over 40, oh, right? On, 4 so, so the more clear I have become and the more I am able to articulate that, I'm I'm clear. So either you have the capacity to honor what I'm saying or you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's whether it's professionally or personally, literally, I'm clear. It's something about waking up and being 40 and being like, you know what? I don't need none of y'all. I'm really not about to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. That over 40 is a whole new energy. I've heard that. Ooh. I'm not like racing to get there or anything, but I've heard that. Like when you 40, Come on baby, over, you can't tell me nothing. Like, I'm, I, I, hello, I've arrived. That's really how I feel. Hmm. I'm only 41 and I'm like, ooh, at 50, I'm going to be a whole situation. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm not mad at Patrice 5.0. She's going to be something spectacular. I already know. So with all of your pivots over the years, how do you manage to let things go? Because mm -hmm. as you pivot, you got to let some stuff yeah. go. How do you let things go without letting people down? Because there's so many people who know you as the money maven. There's so many people who have these expectations of what you should be doing based on what you've been doing. How is that just like a confidence thing? Like, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. This is the new me. Roll with me or get rolled. Like, how how do you transition or pivot without losing people or caring if you lose people? Because I think that's what keeps a lot of people stuck mm -hmm. doing what they've been doing because of those expectations. I respect when a season is up and I just encourage other people to respect when a season is up, right? So if people come into your life for a reason in a season, the reality is maybe I was called to serve you in the season that you found me. And if me being divorced or something bothers you, cause I, you know, a lot of my listeners are Christian. And so I've gotten the DMs from people who are like, well, how do you reconcile? Oh yes, 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 yes. First of all, when I announced it, I did say in the episode and mind your business and only pray for what I asked you to pray for. Don't be praying. Don't be giving me Don't your prayers. <laughs> I said in the episode, I was like, I love you guys, but be respectful of my choices. Because if I've come to this place, I've been in the prayer closet with it. I've talked to God about it. I've talked to a therapist about it. I've talked to a life coach about it. It's a lot of conversations that have happened. So I really don't need you in my DMs mm -hmm. giving me all of what you think think that's 
that's facts, right? But I've still had people who have ended up in the DMs. Well, how do you reconcile getting a divorce as a Christian woman? Do you respond? How how do you? Sometimes it just feels like, you know, if I got time, if I have time, um, I do. I don't always to every single, you know, I'd be there all day. Like, that's a job. But, um, you know, and I've told people that my concept of God has grown so much. Like I'm not really burdened by like being super religious anymore. I grew up very, very religious, but also very hypocritical in a, mm. in a lot of it. And so when my concept of God just expanded my awareness that I don't have to just sit around suffering, um, also did. And so, um, but I, I did encourage like one woman in particular, I was like, If this bothers you, just know I'm going to be actively speaking about it because it's the reality that I'm in right now. And whenever something hit my spirit, hits my spirit and I want to share, I will. And if that bothers you, perhaps our time together is up. And I hope that I served you so well for the season that you were here. Yeah, I've been a faithful listener of the podcast. It's like three million podcasts or something out there. I am so grateful. We have almost 15 million downloads. Come on, I'm grateful million. for every single download. And also, if this no longer serves you, then it's time for you to roll out because there are so many women who are in that place where they are like, they're scared to say, I, this doesn't serve me anymore mm-hmm. or I don't know what to do or it's uncomfortable being the breadwinner. Like there's so many women who want to have these conversations Maybe now it's time for me to serve them and it's our season together. And when something else changes, there will be it's 8 billion people out here. <laughs> Find somebody else is. It's, it's okay. And it's not Take a bad your thing. And download. Oh, but it's, down and it's block. not a bad thing. I literally just respect when a season is up. I'm so like, the people oh. don't ever make you mad, like in the comments and all the DMs and stuff. They don't mm-hmm. make you mad. They do. Yeah, I had someone the other day comment, and um, I was telling the story about it was like a clip from me speaking on stage, and it was about me growing up feeling ugly, some something like right, and having to go to therapy. And someone was like, "You Americans are so weak," and blah 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 and who who needs to go to therapy for that and so I was and something about you don't even have tribal scars it was weird you it's in my comments you don't even have tribal scars and I said I think it's so sad that you would believe that the only abuse that makes that that matters is physical abuse I'm like abuse is present in so many ways and the reason that black people suffer is because we're not free to just talk about our experiences I'm not saying that everyone needs to go to therapy I mean even though I think everyone needs to go to therapy but I'm not saying that I'm saying this is how I have processed like what I'm experiencing and I said in your comment says more about you than it does me but be blessed of you and then and here's the thing use your platform to educate on what, what you, you think believe. is best. There are so many ways to do anything. Use your platform for good. But why are you over here trolling me? And I don't even block them no more. I used to just, my block ministry was so strong for like such a period of time. I, I'd be like, what they said? Block, block, mm-hmm. block, 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 but block, I block, block. first. I respond first so it show up on their notifications <laughs> and then I block them so they can't respond. I don't I'm even block petty. anymore. I I'm let them respond. There. God is so working on me. <laughs> I let them I let them respond I I let them respond now I'm not going to respond to you twice once I say what I said I said what I said I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you no I love when my you know what I love when my followers like when when they're like oh what you need to do is listen to episode such and such such, such." I let the I let the followers get them but you know what to be honest those are so few and far Mm -hmm, between mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really don't attract that many trolls anymore I think it's just my energy. Like my my energy doesn't really allow for you to think you're gonna play with me like that. You know, it just... pray for me, Patrice. Okay, cause I be getting with him, <laughs> and my, my husband be like, "I saw you had to tell her that." I'm like, "You saw it, Hey, I thought I deleted it quick enough, but he be watching. Okay, so <laughs> let's play a little game. Of okay, pull your car. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna let you choose. Do you want to p- do trivia or you want to do this or that? Girl, I'm awful at trivia. Are I'm you? Like, okay, at least you're honest, because it's been some people who didn't think they were awful, and they were actually... Oh, I already know. I'm not your, your partner at any of these. Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. You don't even try? Put up I'm good at Scrabble. <laughs> really? I'm a master at Scrabble. Okay. Yeah, I will seven-letter word you to death, but... I'm awful. Okay. Am I not intelligent? Is that what that I'm means? not saying any probably she likes this yeah okay so this or that is really easy it's okay. not a win or lose it's just an opinion so okay. i'm gonna name two options 
You pick one. Okay. Okay. So, here, my favorite one in the bunch. Are you choosing Fresh Prince or Martin? Fresh Prince. Yeah, nobody ever says Fresh Prince. Really? I knew you was my girl. Okay. Now that you are divorced with dignity, are you going with looks or money? Money. <laughs> Wait, but can I back. just say? Yes, say. I have to say this was a this was a limiting belief I had to change okay. and on my list that I talked about. So because I'm self sufficient and I can take care of myself, I've just kind of thought like, oh, I don't really need, need a man with money. money. Yeah. So I kept attracting people who just were cute, broke, and I'm like, disgusting. okay, I have to add to the list. Um, can take care of themselves one thousand percent, not a hundred. That's not enough. A thousand percent. And then I said, has the capacity to take care of me, even if I don't need them to. Mm-hmm. But you have the capacity, and it's possible. Yeah, and it, and it's so. very possible. But because that was a thing, oh, I don't need a man with money. That's what I was attracting. That's how so many successful women attract men with nothing because they have that mindset that I don't need anything, and then mm-hmm. you get nothing. Very true. Yeah, I was a bum magnet out here. <laughs> okay, are you choosing money, Maven? Are you choosing? An 800 credit score or $50,000 cash? 800 credit score. Really? You don't yeah. want the 50K? You like that? Ain't nothing that little chump change. Okay. Um, well, no, because you have a credit limit with $50,000. And you could get more than And then you could get multiple credit limits with the 800, yeah. Yeah, and then okay. have access to way more. I trust you. You're the money maker. Yeah. <laughs> um, insecure or power? Power. Issa Rae, I love you, girl. Can't wait to have you in the studio. I'm choosing Insecure every time. <laughs> All right. Do you prefer listening to the radio or an album? An album. Really? You don't care about the singles? No, not your thing? I, you know, I, I never really have terrestrial radio on anymore. Like, I usually am just going straight to whatever my playlist is. I live in 90s R&B. Baby, I don't know 90s R&B. what is going, going on, on these here. days. Like, I mean, I hear Glow things. Rilla, not and, your girl. You my daughter, uh, uh, my daughter yeah, played that song yeah. for me. You liked it a little bit, right? I did. You I mean, because of the yeah, season yeah. I was in. Right, I was right, like, right, oh, 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 yeah. Just blame it on she, my child. It was listen, her. These kids will keep you young. Yeah. They'll keep you yeah. out here. Patrice, I love you. I love you, too. I can't wait to hug and squeeze you. Look in that camera right there. Tell the people how they can command the stage, where they can listen to the yeah. podcast so we can be at 50 million downloads, yes. and how they can follow you on social media. Well, you can find out about all things Patrice Washington at patricewashington.com. And you could connect with me in social media at Seek Wisdom PCW. Instagram is still my favorite place to play. I do respond to DMs. Just don't ask me. Don't act crazy. Don't act. Don't act crazy, because I leave you in that other box. But um, if you heard me here, just let me know so that I can always thank Co for introducing me to you. And of course, come on over to the Redefining Wealth podcast. I teach from the six pillars of wealth. These are all the parts of life that impact your finances, even when you're not thinking about it. So if you're struggling with any part of your wealth building, I guarantee you there's some place where you are cluttered and you are not well, and I can probably help you pinpoint it. So come learn more at the Redefining Wealth podcast. You heard it here first, y'all. We got all up in your business just a little bit. I appreciate it. You're the it. first person I let really get in my <sighs> business like that. I feel honored because uh-huh. you're the first person that let me interview them <laughs> on the podcast. So it's a full circle moment. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Share this episode with a friend, y'all. Like it. Comment below. Do all of the things because it was some good girl talk up yeah. in here. And grab your deck, pullyocard.com. See you next week. Girl, hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. This channel is all about encouraging you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. And comment below and let me know what you want to see on the next video. Peace out. This is Mindy. A shared comfort. Well, boy, it's getting hot out there. Now, if your AC is making funny noises, just needs a once-over, or your home isn't as cool as it used to be, visit AssuredComfort.com. Assured Comfort. License CN004785. 
Welcome to another round of Boardroom or Miro Board. Today we talk retrospectives with Agile Coach Maria. Let's go. First question. You've spent two hours in a team retro, but the only input you've heard is Dave's. Boardroom or Miro Board? Boardroom. In Miro, Dave can't hog the space because everyone can add thoughts anonymously, online, at the same time. Correct. Next. You need the team to act on feedback fast, so you turn all those retro notes into JIRA tasks instantly. Miro all the way. And I can assign those tasks to teammates. You're nailing this. Now, you see hundreds of sticky notes from the retro. A real mess. But you organize them into five themes in just seconds. Miro, I basically get back an entire hour when I use its AI tools for clustering. And she's done it. Join over 60 million people running actually enjoyable and actionable retros in Miro. Get your first three boards free at Miro.com. That's M I R O.com. Primary election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Now is the time to make a plan. Whether you plan to vote absentee by mail, in person at your county auditor's office before election day, or at your polling place on June 4th, it's important you take steps now to make your plan at voterready.iowa.gov. Remember, election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Find more info at voterready.iowa.gov. This message is presented by the Iowa Secretary of State. Save big money on exterior wall lights. Now at Menards. Find your style with Patriot Lighting. Exterior lights enhance the look of your home. Choose from over 50 options from Patriot Lighting. Now through May 19th, get $10 instant savings on a single qualifying purchase of $100 or more on in-stock outdoor wall lights. Check out our entire selection of outdoor lights and see the rest of our deals happening now on Menards.com. Save big money. 